In terms of evaluation for the market, we don't view it as being egregious, although averages are now at all-time highs. You compare that with the year 2000, which in retrospect was a much more overpriced market. Uh, I don't see, I don't get the sense of a bubble right now. It is possible that there are bubbles in certain individual stocks, but the market itself, I don't have that sense. Notwithstanding that, you can always have 10, 15 percent declines, which could materialize. We have not seen one in quite some time. The last one of over 10 percent we had probably in 2011, I want to say. This year, volatility has been incredibly low. Some of this, really some of the most narrow markets that we've seen in terms of ranges, volatility is unusually low, which has not been characteristic of the market over the last five years. So on one hand, I think that tends to breed complacency. On the other hand, when you look at the overall valuation, stocks on a PE multiple basis are not out of line with, uh, with historical norms, and interest rates have remained low, and they've stayed lower far longer than most people have thought. And based on the indication that the Federal Reserve has given, they're not expected to be rising dramatically in the next few years. The, uh, we're respectful of a market that's been up significantly since the lows of 2009. You know, notwithstanding volatility over the last few years, this is a year we really have not had a lot of volatility. In all honesty, I think you can always get caught up in looking at what's happening in Syria and Iraq, etc. And there have been people could use that as excuses not to invest. If you, if you myopically focus on those things, you never own stocks. It really is you worry more about the individual companies, and I would say that about the economy as well. In terms of an economic forecast, I really can't do much better than what the Federal Reserve uh, tells us. They have thousands of PhDs that presumably know a lot more about that than I do. They're not looking for much change in growth from what we've been seeing over the last year or two, which ideally is a pretty good rate of growth for the stock market. You get a 2 2.5% GDP growth rate. It's low enough where interest rates won't have to rise, or if they rise, they're not going to be rising at a significant rate. And it's not going to be inflationary if those numbers are correct. We worry much more about the individual companies than we do trying to make a macro call on, on the economy. I don't want to mention it. There's always, you know, after 9-11, there's always the God forbid risk that you never get out of your mind, but that affects everything. And you can't defense yourself against that. Global yeah. risk, yeah, probably if the price of oil escalates to $150 a barrel, it obviously slows the economy. Most recessions have been related to, uh, you know, most recessions are normally related to big jumps in the price of oil or large interest rate jumps, which we have not witnessed over the last 10 years, or crisis of confidence. It's very difficult to forecast a crisis of confidence difficult to forecast global global trends as that would affect oil. So I think if you worry about potential macro events, you're going to be missing out on great things that are happening to your individual companies. And that's why we've always said from day one, we want to become experts on companies as opposed to becoming experts on the economy.